You are listening to a sermon by Pastor Christopher Sally of New Life Christian Fellowship Church. Not I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. And when you start talking about Jesus, it's hard not to get excited. Amen. It's hard not to to get excited when you're talking about Jesus. And as I was preparing this and really focusing on it uh, yesterday, I uh, I was just I was just so excited. And again, I, I feel this 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 burden and weight of responsibility to try to capture what I believe is the Apostle John's sense of urgency around this person called Jesus. When he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And we talked last week about those verses, meaning the highlighting his the emphasis of his eternity with God and his mutuality with God and his equality uh, with God. And in verse 2, being a reminder of his trinity and pointing us to the trinity of God. Amen. And so we can safely conclude from verses 1 and 2 that Jesus is the, the word. Amen. The logos. The logos that the Greeks understood to be the divine uh, essence, excuse me, a disclosure of the divine essence, uh, the word that the Jews understood to be the eternal expression of his divine intelligence. So the expression of the divine intelligence and, and the disclosure, if you will, of the divine essence, that's who the word was and John is letting us know that that word is is not a mindset. It's not an intelligence. It, it it's it literally is located in a person, and his name is Jesus. Talking about Jesus. <laughs> what you talking about, dude? I'm talking about Jesus. <laughs> Come on, son. I'm talking about Jesus right now. I'm, not, I'm just not talking about just some guy. Again, as we talked about last week, John said, you, you, I don't have an option. You don't have an option to just conclude that he was somebody who lived 2,000 years ago, and his effect was that he, he made an impact, and he has some followers, and he has some nice philosophies. And I'm, nah, I'm talking about Jesus. He's either a liar or a lunatic, or he's Lord, because the way he positioned himself, you have no other way to process him, if you will, than to say either he's crazy, uh, uh, he's a liar, or he literally must be what he said he is, Lord and creator and sustainer of all life. And that's what he is. He is the word. But verse 3 as we, as we move on, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. That is a pretty definitive statement that lets us know that not only is Jesus the word, Jesus is the creator. Amen? Again, John's point is, these things were written that ye may believe that Jesus is the Son of God and believing that ye may have life in his name. That's what he said. That's everything that he included in his gospel is that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God and believing that you might have life in his name. Amen? And so he takes a different tact, if you will, and he's, he, he, he goes all the way back to eternity past. He has a theological framework that he's, he is laying, and you may think that it's, it's not worth exploring, if you will, that it's, that it's too deep, 
that it's too much. You know, I, I don't want to talk so much about, I can't really wrap my head around this thing you're calling the Trinity. I can't wrap my head around him being uh, the second person of the Trinity and God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you, you've got to wrap your head around it enough that you might believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that believing you might have life in his name. He's the creator. And there's, a, there's an expression, I believe it's in the, ne, in the Latin, it's called ex nihilo, ex nihilo, excuse me, which means out of nothing. Amen. So just to be clear, when, when I say that he is the creator, amen, he, I'm, not, I'm not telling you he's a creator like he had some primordial ooze hanging around and he had some building blocks of things. He literally spoke the world into existence. Amen. So it wasn't like he had to think about it. It wasn't like he had to search around for some for some projects or some tools or or, or something like that or some resources. He literally just spoke the world into what? Existence. Ex nihilo. God who at sundry times and in divers matters spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom he also made the what made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power that's what hebrews 1 1 through 3 reminds us about and then just to be clear, in 1 Corinthians 8 and 6, it says this, but to us there is but, oh, I might be running out of battery strength here. Ugh. Oh, shoot. Uh, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by him. Let me switch to this. This one testing. All right, um, I'm scared to I'm scared to turn this this mic off because it sometimes does something something crazy. But I'm gonna just turn it down that way. Okay. Um, again, and so again, uh, and one Lord Jesus by whom are all things, and we by Him. And so again, I just want to emphasize to you that Jesus is the Creator. Amen. And, and, and just to and just to, to, to have a just just a, a slight discussion and, and, and look at Colossians chapter one, we, we see a couple of things that are important to us in Colossians chapter one, 16 and 17. It says this for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and what for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist Listen, I just want to remind you really quickly, we've, we've looked at those verses before. You might even have notes on those verses, but it's always good to get a reminder when it comes to creation about who Jesus Christ is. Those verses uh, c confirm for us, by him all things uh, were created that are in heaven and that are in earth. He is the formulator of creation. Amen. He is the formulator. That's why he's preeminent. He is the formulator of creation. All things were created by him and for him. And it says, and he is before all things and by him, all things exist, but it was all things were created by him and for him. Amen. And so not only is he the formulator of creation, ultimately he's the focus of creation. Amen. 
He's the focus of creation, the focus. Because all things were for him, he is the focus. Because he was before all things, beloved, you need to be reminded that not only is he the formulator of, the, of creation or the focus of creation, beloved, he's the founder of creation. The founder. In terms of priority, in terms of being for, he's the founder of creation, the formulator, the, fo the focus. And here is my favorite when it says, and by him all things consist. We just read in Hebrews chapter 1 that he upholds all things by the what? The word of his power. By him all things consist. Baby, he not just a formulator. I'm talking about Jesus now. He's not just a formulator. He's not just a focus. He's not just a founder. Beloved, he's the force of creation. The force of creation. For those of you that will remember your physics, and, and I can promise you that I do not, but there are, there are four forces that exist in physics or they identified in, in nature electromagnetic force, gravitational force, something called weak nuclear force, and something called strong nuclear force. And the only reason that I tell you that is because I want to remind you that scientifically they cannot explain why, uh, as you may recall, if you had two magnets that, that, that you would have, and I remember having those little magnet sets, a positive and a negative, they would stick together. But the two positive, you could literally, or you put it on a negative side, and you would try to put them close to each other, they would repel. They, 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 wouldn't, they, cu they couldn't exist in the, in, the, in, the same, uh, in the same space. Two positives will repel, two negatives will repel, but a positive and a negative will attract and protons are, are positive. So in every nucleus except for hydrogen, which has only one proton, there is no real explanation as to how these positives can stay inside of a nucleus. Literally, the expectation is these things will blow apart. This, these things will repel. These things will not be able to stay. And because they cannot explain what that is, they come up with something called strong nuclear force. They, they don't know what it is, but it doesn't make any sense because everything that they know about atoms, everything they know about protons and, and nuclei means that, that nothing should hold together. Amen. Matter of fact, there was a physicist from Bell Labs who said it this way. You grasp what this implies. It implies that all the massive nuclei have no right to be alive at all. Indeed, they should never have been created. And if created, they should have blown up instantly. Yet here they all are. Some inflexible inhibition is holding them relentlessly together. The nature of the inhibition is also a secret, one that thus far has been reserved by nature for herself. I'm here to tell you, Carl Darrow, that that unidentified <laughs> source, that unidentified inhibition, that nature has held secret is revealed in the one who says by him all things consist by him he upholds all things by the word of his power the reason that strong nuclear force exists is because Jesus says I want it to hold together and when Jesus says I want it to stop working it'll literally stop and literally the world would blow up he holds all things so when you get to Second Peter, when it talks about the elements will be burned up in fervent heat when at, the, at, at those last days, I don't believe Jesus will have to do anything ex to blow up this world except simply say this, strong nuclear force, stop working. And everything that we know will blow up instantly because he holds everything by the word of his power. He is the formulator of creation. He's the focus of creation. He's the foundation of creation. Beloved, he's the force of creation. He is the creator. And in verse 4 says, in him was life. In him was was what? Life. 
So he is the word. Come on, somebody. He is the creator. As important that that is, you need to know that he's also the life giver. Mm. Jesus is the life giver. This is, this is crucial to understand. Because Jesus talks throughout the Gospels and particularly in John about his connection to life. These things were written that ye may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that by believing ye may have life in his what? In his name. John 10 and 10 says the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they might have life. And have it more abundantly. And what I love about that, and we'll talk about it before we conclude that, that there's really a pattern that we see in Scripture that shows you what abundant life really looks like. Jesus comes and he says, I'm, I'm coming to bring life. Amen. So he is the, not, not just the creator, not just the word. He is the, he's the life giver. He says, I came that they might have life. And just as an added bonus, I came that they might have it more abundantly. John 17 says this, these words spoke Jesus. He said, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy son, thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. And this is life eternal. You want to know what life eternal really looks like? This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. He says, and you said, I have you given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given to him. It's awesome. It's powerful. His connection to life. That John said, again, keep going back to it because it's just so good. In 1 John 1, he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen in our eyes, which we've looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the father. Come on. And was manifested unto us literally in the person of Jesus Christ. And that's why the apostle Paul. In Athens, in Acts chapter 17, he can get up and make a, a speech to them that says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is in the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's as though he needed uh, anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Amen. And hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth, that they should seek the Lord, if the happily they may feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. He said, look, I walked around the city. I seen that you all are very religious. You even have an altar and a, and a place to, to sacrifice to the unknown God. He said, but that which is unknown to you, I'm going to make known to you today. The person that you're looking for that brings life, the person that you're looking for that is life, the person that you're looking for that sustains life the person that you're looking for that holds life and gives life and gives eternal life and gives abundant life his name is Jesus life 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 Thomas said unto him Lord we do not know where y'all where you go us and we do not know the way and Jesus said unto him I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by, but by me. It's interesting that in three of the I am statements of John concerning uh, Jesus' proclamations about uh, himself, that three out of those seven have something to do with life. Amen. I just gave you one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus goes out and feeds 5,000, takes a boat, goes across the, folk, the, 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 the sea. Folks wake up and realize that he's gone. 
and run him down and find him and say, hey, 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 Jesus, where'd you go? He said, you're not looking for me because you want me. You're looking for me because your belly's got full last, last time when I fed you. But I need you to understand I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is flesh, which I give for the life of the world. He said, literally, I am the bread of life. But in order to get your attention around me being the bread of life, I'll feed 5,000 with five fish and two loaves. Five loaves and two fish, excuse me. Five loaves and two fish. I need to set these miracles up so that I can tell you what I need to tell you. I'll feed 5,000 so that you realize I am the bread of life that literally came down from heaven. I'll go see the family that I love. I'll go see the fact that Lazarus is, is in Bethany and Lazarus has been graveyard dead for four days. I'll go see Mary and Martha. And in John chapter 11, it'll be, it'll be noted that Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, but yet he remained where he was for four, uh, for two more days. And I'll come and you'll say, do you believe that, 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 that I can raise your brother from the dead? She said, I know he'll be raised in the, in the end, in the, in the last resurrection. And he said, listen, I am the resurrection. And the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And so in order to help you to understand that I am the resurrection and the life, that, that, that I control and, and, I, and I have sp spiritual sustainment is in me, I'll raise somebody from the dead that was graveyard dead and I have to do it so particularly that I have to call his name because I'm life if I just said everybody in here get up if I didn't say a name if I didn't say anything and I just said come to life everybody in that graveyard would have got up he said for what I'm trying to do right now I only need Lazarus Shh, everybody else just wait Lazarus come forth because I'm life. I am life. And I raise the dead. But that's not all God wants to do in your life. Is just be the word. Just be. Be the creator. Just be the life giver. That's, that's in, I got to hold this hand here. There's something else in John chapter 1 that he wants to be, and I would argue as we progress, as you see the pattern of Scripture, this is pretty darn important. And it's right there. He said, in him was life. And that life was the what? Light of man. I literally have in my notes, and I see it. It just simply says, oh, my. <laughs> Watch out. He's not just trying to be the, 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 the life giver, beloved. He is the, he's the light. <clears throat> and he confirms that he is the, the light. <laughs> In John 11 and 9, Jesus says to them, his disciples, Jesus answers, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this, of this world. In Revelations 21 and 23, as you see a picture of the new heavens and the new earth, that verse tells us this. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the lamb is the light thereof. He said, I am the light. In, in Luke chapter 2, uh, the, older, the older man, the, uh, Simon, was, was the one who was up in age, and, and, and he wanted to see Jesus. 
And he said in those verses in 29 through 32 of Luke 2, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel. He says, I can die in peace. You promised me I would see the Messiah before the, I die, and I have seen him, and he is the light that has been given to light to the Gentiles. Why do you need light? It's a pretty simple reason why you need light. To see where you're going. Have you ever walked literally in darkness from your bed to the bathroom with no light? (sighs) That can be a very uh, difficult journey to traverse. Because you may often forget where the chair is, where something else was. And if you stub your toe in the dark, Lord Jesus. And, and, and you can say to yourself, if I'd have just taken a second to just turn on a light, then I would be able to see my way. Even if it's just grabbing your phone and just taking the light from, from, from the phone. But, but you need the light to see your way. Jesus is the light and the light reveals truth. And Jesus is the light and you need to see your way so that you can see the truth about who God is as holy. You need the the light so that you can see who man is as sinful man. You need the light so you can see the world for what it is. It's chaotic. Amen. You need to know and understand all of those things. You need to be able to see so that you can respond correctly. Think about it all the way back in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light why did he need to bring light because he needed to remove chaos and darkness and when the light shows up the chaos goes when the light shows up darkness has to retreat he says I'm gonna set up in the light and the light will be day and then at, at the darkness will have the night but you need the light and when the light shows up darkness flees it has to it's, it's almost as if it's by definition. You remember in John huh, chapter 8, Jesus made this statement about himself in verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am what I am, the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I need to just tell you the context under which Jesus said that, just like he had context around saying, I'm the resurrection and the life. Just like there was context around me uh, uh, saying that he was the bread of life. There's context around him making a declaration at that exact moment that, trust me, I am the light of the world. It was during the Feast of Tabernacles. And in the court of women, which is a part of the temple, as part of the celebration of the feast, the, the uh, feast of tabernacles, when they were the, the children of Israel were in the desert and they were wandering o- around and they and, and how they lived. This the, the feast of tabernacles is during that period of wandering. They're celebrating that. They set up four huge candles that were like seventy-five feet high. They set them up in the court of women. They, they, they set them up to, the, to remind the people of when they were led by the pillar of fire, pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, that, that, that light. And so during that time when they were tabernacling in, in, in the wilderness, they, they, it's to remind the people of the pillar of fire. And in anticipation of the lighting of those candles, the, the, the men danced and they sang songs and they praised all night long. And it's said that those four lights illuminated the entire city. 
And that festival reminded that God promised to send a light to a darkened, sinful world. And so I don't know what part of the festival it was. I don't know if the lights were already lit. Maybe they were. Maybe he's looking and maybe people are seeing. They're seeing the light. And literally, that light lights the city. (laughs) Jesus said, I know we're in here celebrating that light. That light that was the pillar of fire by day, but literally, I'm not lighting the city. Beloved, I'm lighting the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So when you see that declaration, when you see that in context, you see the import of what God is saying. He says in John 12 and 46, I am come to light. It, I have come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Amen. Second Corinthians 4 says, but if our gospel be hid, it is his Hear from them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I'm starting to get really excited. I'm starting to see that God is going somewhere with this creator, life giver, and light. He is going somewhere. I I know that this will help to remind you that that Lucifer thought he 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 was going to be the light. Amen. He forgot that his night night his name means light bearer and, and, and not light bringer. Amen. He forgot that he said, I'm going to ascend. He forgot that he was moonlight, not sunlight. Amen. He thought that the light that was reflecting that he would bear somehow, he thought that he, he could generate his own light. Amen. So God said that that's not how that's going to roll. So we got to get rid of you. We don't want to get it twisted. There's a pattern here that, that tells us that again, and you look at second Corinthians that we are to be light. Amen. Because we have the light of the glorious gospel of Christ for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We only are not only do we have the light because we have Christ, we're to give the light. We're supposed to be the moonlight to his sunlight in that metaphor. Amen. We're supposed to be light in the darkness. Amen. Always. The light in the darkness. And I'll just say this, and you'll know this, and this is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We'll get to that in just one second. But I want you to look at the, the pattern of creation. And the pattern of creation is this. Genesis 2 says, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground, creation, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, life giver. And man became a living soul. I need you to connect that to Genesis 2 and 16. These are God's first words to the man he created. Genesis 2, 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. It was the relationship. God didn't just stop at saying, I want a a creator, life giver, I want to bring light to you. And light means that I, I want to be able to talk to you and, and walk with you. It's, light is about instruction and communion and intimacy. That's the, that's the literal pattern. God didn't say, I want to create you and just give you life. I want to give you light, too. And that light comes when you listen to me and when I command you, you do what I say. Amen. The abundant life is is tied up, wrapped up, and 
tangled up in the obedient life. God says, I'm giving you light. The light is you get the opportunity to be in relationship with me through Jesus Christ that I might give you the light that will lead to salvation, but also leads to you walking and talking and being intimate to me with me. That's what I wanted from the beginning. That's what I had with Adam and Eve before they fell. They were naked and, and open before me and were not ashamed. I walked and talked with them in the cool of the day. I gave them my instruction. We had intimacy. We had communion. That's light. Creator, life giver, light. Jesus is all of that. And so when Jesus says, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, abundant life is light. Abundant life is life. Abundant life, excuse me, is light. The light, the ability to be able to be in relationship with God where he commands you and you obey him. So you and I need to put our trust in the light so that we can be sons of light. That's the pattern. That's God's desire. That's why John, like I am right now, is sweating <laughs> and trying to let you know the urgency of the resource that we have, the kingdom resource that we have in the living word of Jesus Christ. It's because through him, we have light. And not only are we supposed to follow that light, we're supposed to share that light. You are the, Jesus says this to us, you are the light of the world. He just said, I am the light of the world. Do you see how you can be the light of the world? Because the light of the world says, if my light is in you and it reflects and it fully reflects, guess what? You'll be the light of the world. Amen. And when he departs and when he's not, Jesus was on the earth. But then when he departs, he said, I, I, I've set it up so that I can I can disperse my light all over the world through you. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven. So what he's really saying is you don't have any light of your own. You will stumble around and hurt your toe, go into the bathroom time after time after time. But if you let the light that I've given you that resides in you through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to light your way and light others folk, other folks' way so that they may praise your Father who is in heaven. In him was life. And if we can do it right, that life can become the light of men. And as we conclude, I'll just say this. Verse 5 has some tragedy and triumph in it. He said, the light shines in the darkness. But the darkness has not understood it. What I love about that is that's the, the given translation in the NIV and the Bible that I have. But it also has a note that says, or the darkness has not overcome it. <laughs> Both things are true. The darkness has not understood it, but the darkness cannot overcome it either because when the lights go on darkness flees but the reason that the light is in this world and folks don't understand it is because of that verse in John chapter 3 that we talked about they can't lay hold of it and can't comprehend it because why men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil You and I know that when you're trying to creep, you want to do it 
at night. You and I know. Maybe it was just me. But when I would visit Kimberly Rogers at her house in London town, and I knew Nana was upstairs and could pop up in and out of her own house anytime she wanted to. If Sister and Kim and I wanted to engage in certain uh, amorous uh, activities, better to do that. Under the, under, the, under the command of the prophet Teddy Pendergrass, who said, turn off the light and light a candle. <laughs> because if it's dark, that just gives you a little bit more time before Nana comes down those stairs. <laughs> hey, hey. And so we gravitate towards darkness when our deeds are not what they should be. Well, praise God. Now the lights can be on or off. Come on, somebody. We've been married 31 years. Lights on, lights off, light. We just, yeah, we don't have to listen to Teddy or anybody else. We can do what we want. We're married. Amen. But at that point. Again, and you think about your life, you think about the things that people want to do. You don't, you don't rob somebody in broad daylight. That's usually not the M.O. You wait until the cover of darkness because the deeds require that you have a cover of darkness. So, again, you can't lay hold of it, comprehend the light when you have e uh, deeds that are what? Evil. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have been have done has been done through God. So again, the light folks will not understand that light. But again, light folks will not overcome. Eventually, eventually, when the light shows up, darkness has to feed, flee, just like in creation. It's always the same way. And and. First Peter says it this way, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Walk in the light. The beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light. That's what he tells us in first John. Walk in the light, and you will not fulfill the you will not fulfill the deeds of uh, of darkness. This is the message. We have heard and declared that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not tell the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We need to walk in the light. That's why John went through such a painstaking uh, a way to be able to say in him was life. And that life was the light of men. It's not just creation. It's not just him bringing life. He wants to bring you light. That light is instruction and intimacy and communion with him. That's the pattern in Genesis and chapter 2. That's the pattern of our life. He says, I want to instruct you so that you may walk in the light and leave darkness alone. I'm the light of the world. He that walketh with me will never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life abundant life beloved that Jesus talks about in John chapter 10 is a life that has light in it not a life that stumbles around and stubs its toe constantly not a life that uh, falls down not a life that that desires the cover of darkness because they want to pursue things that are not kingdom things we want to walk in the light the beautiful light come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright shine all around us by day and by night jesus the light of the world